Hello everyone, this is Tondi. I'm doing another tutorial for Molly Mine Embroidery Designs. Right now we're gonna work on this new barn quilt that is coming out and it's something we've never done before. So we're gonna go through um, the first set that will be released for this barn quilt. What you see here is gonna be the center medallion for the quilt. There will be more pieces to come that can make up an outer border. This is four individual blocks, one, two, three, four, and they'll be hooked together in this tutorial at the end. We'll go through um, how to assemble them. For each block, you will need whatever hoop size you choose, one layer of no-show mesh stabilizer, or any stabilizer of your choice that suits you, a piece of batting that will fit the inside of your hoop, and then we need fabrics for each block. Once you have your supplies chosen, um, we'll start over at the machine and, and work on this step by step. Um, I hope you guys enjoy this. This is super fun and get ready to make a barn quilt. As you can see, I have this loaded on the machine. Um, the, this particular um, series, we have a quarter inch built in seam as she does with many of her designs, but she has created us a tack down stitch just for our batting on this series. So we're gonna start out by doing that, and it's this simple. We, the very first thing we're gonna do is put our batting down on top of our stabilizer. It needs to fill the majority of your hoop. Uh, and then we're gonna stitch step one, which is simply a square to tack it down, and then we're gonna trim. As you can see, I've trimmed very close to the edge. The next step, it's going to give us a basic outline of where all the fabrics will lay. So your outermost line will be one quarter inch outside of this. It helps keep our seams from getting too bulky. This is what it will look like. This particular block is two simple, traditional applique pieces of fabric. And then we are going to add in embroidery and highlights. There is a third little traditional piece of applique when we do the upper barn vent, the little circular vent at the top. Um, you will see me do each of these steps in a fast forward mode, simply because these are all well known, simple to do steps. When I get into the next block, we'll have both traditional and stitch and flip methods. And I will slow the camera down for parts of those to make sure that you can see what we're doing. This block is finished and we're ready to trim and get started on the second one. Okay, we have the next block loaded up and ready to start, but first I wanna show you when we finish a block, we I've trimmed it all the way to this edge. Oftentimes you will hear folks tell you to leave a quarter inch or half inch of fabric down there um, for seam allowance, but it is not necessary. This Remember the seam allowance is built in, so when we have these trimmed, we put them face together. This now is your edge that you would line up to sew. You will stitch one quarter of an inch inside to where we tack down our batting. This is the outermost edge of your fabric, not where you stitch. So this is your seam allowance already in here and it's tacked down very well in the design because of that zigzag stitch that we saw go down. So. Feel free during your hoop to trim it all the way around the edge. You will be able to line it up so nicely when you're finished. Okay, now we're gonna get on to this lower half of the barn. There will be both traditional applique and stitch and flip in here, but I'm going to start out with fast forward mode and then I will slow it down when I want you to see something more closely. Okay, for those of you who may yet not be familiar with stitch and flip, the first piece is on, that's gonna be the barn doors, 
and then I'm going, we're, the next step is a straight line right across here. And we're simply gonna line up our raw edge face down with the raw edge right there at the top. It will stitch one line across here and then we'll fold the fabric up and it will tack it down. We're gonna do this one on regular video speed. So those of you who need to be reminded about stitch and flip can see it. Okay, so our single line is tacked down and you're simply going to take your fabric and fold it. You can finger crease it right across there and then it will do a tack down stitch all the way around. Okay, as you can see, this is finishing up. I'm going to put it back onto fast forward mode because now there are simply a series of stitch and flip and some embroidery that highlights and some more stitch and flip. Um, it should be pretty self-explanatory after this, but I will go ahead and finish through this design on fast forward mode so you can watch how this plays out. Okay, this block is all finished, and we're going to go take this out of the hoop and trim it up and get ready for the start of the next block. The next one is going to be the lower portion of the barn with the tractor in it. Okay, we're ready to start our tractor um, with the lower part of the silo behind it, and we're going to, we have our square stitched out, and we're going to put our batting over it to cover it and get ready to get started. This block is also just a series of um, traditional applique and stitch and flip. That part's fairly straightforward and the adding of the embroidery is fairly straightforward. Um, there's probably one spot where I will stop and highlight for you which fabric to put there simply because I've made my own mistake in the past and I will, so I'll highlight for you where to be sure and put um, fabric that looks like a field and not like the sky. So when we get to that part, I will stop the fast forward mode and show you. Okay, so I've stopped the machine right after the step where it highlights the parts in the silo. It is going to come up here and stitch a straight line right down here, and we're going to fold over. This piece of fabric right here should match this long piece of fabric right here. This I accidentally treated like sky one day, but it is not sky. This is part of the field in the background. So whatever you're gonna use for your field area is gonna be here and this long section. So right now we're doing this piece. So my back field is gonna be this green.
Okay, I've slowed down just to point out that it's getting ready to stitch out this door. That's just a traditional applique right here. So you're going to lay your piece over the whole rectangle a little bit bigger and then trim it down once it's finished. We'll do stitch and flip again for this last final piece of grass. So um, just wanted to point that out. Okay, this one's done. I know that light's not very good. You can see the colors better if I leave it laying down there. Um, I'm going to get this one out and trim it up, and we'll get ready to start that last block. Okay, so we're getting ready to start the last block. This is from the other one that I made, and it's just going to be the silo material and the roof and the sky. So it's fairly straightforward. It's all, um, most of it is going to be stitch and flip. There's, I think, maybe the... The first part of it is a traditional and that's it. It's pretty straightforward. So I'm gonna put this video onto fast forward and let you kind of watch me finish up this last block. And then I will slow it back down to show you all how to simply stitch the four blocks together. All right, this last block is finished stitching out. I'm going to go take it out of the hoop, trim it up, and then we will get over to the main sewing machine. All right, so we have four blocks done. Now, here's your choice. You can either hook these two together and these two together and then hook them together down the middle, or I'm going to choose to put these together first because it has my tree and then I will put the bottom row together and then I will adjoin them this way. So right now I'm going to face these together and line them up as best as I can. It's really important on this tree that you do as accurate as possible of a seam allowance. And if after you open it, you don't like the lining of your, of your branches, you can always take it out and, and line it back up. That's why I'm gonna to choose to do these two first. That way it's not that big of a deal if I'm not satisfied and I can line it back up again. Okay, there you have it. It worked great. My suggestion is definitely to hook these two together first. That made it much easier for me when I tried hooking top to bottom and top to bottom and then joining the rows down here. It was much more difficult on the tree. I had a really easy time just doing this. Um, there they are. And then when you come across the bottom, just line your ladder up. It's the one that's the most important right there. So I hope you all have enjoyed the barn video tutorial and I hope that you have a fun time doing this quilt and if you need any help, just give a holler. Happy quilting. This concludes the barn quilt tutorial for Molly Mine. Please visit mollymine.com to get your barn quilt designs. Thank you.